Only. So um, today we're gonna tie a fly, and uh, and uh, and this is a fly intended for the Danish uh, coastal sea trout. It's called Sixten, and it's invented by uh, a good friend of mine. Uh, his name is Rune Vestpale, and uh, and he's one of the most gifted and best sea trout uh, fly fisherman that I know of. Rune has kind of this magic feel, this magic touch, and he just catches continuously big sea trout in uh, in both difficult conditions and in winter and and throughout the years. So uh, the year so so Rune is 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 really really one of those guys that when he speaks I listen. And the other day I saw a post from him uh, him on uh, on Facebook where he said that on this new pattern the sixth he had caught uh, six sea trout about Above 60 centimeters in the past three weeks, and when you see something like that, it's it's worth taking note of. So so I I reached out and and asked him if it would be okay that I did his uh, his pattern as as a YouTube tutorial, and he said go for it, Daniel, go for it. So here goes. Now we're gonna tie Rune Vestpales, uh, sea trout fly, the sixteen. So here goes the sixteen, uh, a pattern by Rune Vestpale. First, I'm gonna uh, attach my tying thread, and this is the uh, UTC uh, 70 Dinya um, in the color shell pink. Um, this will fit nicely with uh, with uh, with the rest of the color scheme of uh, of this fly. Um, for this, we're gonna use some uh, some grizzly marabou. And uh, and uh, the best way to get grizzly marabou is to get one of these. This is a whiting, and it's called a rooster SH-C, which stands for uh, soft hackle with chickaboo. So whiting calls this chickaboo. Ewing has exactly the same product. They just call it a marabou patch. Um, so, so basically you get a lot of soft hackles uh, and then you get some really nice uh, marabou feathers here that can be used both as a hackle, but they're also great for, uh, for tails and stuff. So, so in a product like this you really really have a lot of options and you get a lot of feathers, especially because these are relatively cheap. Um, you get a lot of feathers and at a good price. So the first thing we need is, is one of these uh, marabou feathers here. Um, and, and basically I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick out and, and simply just remove the tip of this by pulling it off and then I'm going to remove a lot of the, uh, the, the most woody part of, uh, of, the, uh, of the actual hackle here and now I can already see that this feather is a bit too small I'm going to need one more so there we have the, f well, the, the first part of this um, I, I accidentally removed too much, um, so I'm just gonna do another, take another feather, and and do the same the same procedure once again. There we go. Just to get this kind of fluffy, very alive tail from this uh, this grizzly marabou, and then to uh, make sure that I have a quite even. Um, quite even body here for my senile then I'm gonna tie the uh, the actual hackle stems a bit up along the uh, along the uh, the hook shank here so there we have it I'm gonna move my tying thread back I'm gonna move my tail a bit further down into the, uh, into the hook bend here so there we have the tail, and then we're gonna use the uh, the senile. This is uh, this is just uh, ultra senile, and, and the, the length here is uh, is medium or standard, if you will. And uh, and what you can you, how you, how you do this and use this is basically you pull some of this off, some of the some of the material that's woven into these two strands, or I think it's two strands of uh, of twine. And, and then you can tie this on without having created a too bulky body for your fly. Now to do the, uh, this properly and, and have the right properties, the right, uh, the right tapering of this, you need not to, to turn this too many turns, otherwise the fly here is gonna look 
it's going to look um, not not correct in the in the tapering. So you want ideally three turns of this on a size six, and then I'm going to tie this down and cut it away because we need the uh, we need the bead chains here as well. If if we want this fly to be kind of aligned uh, with the rest of the body, so I'm going to take uh, an old pair of scissors or a pair of pliers to cut my my bead ch chain here in half. I'm going to apply the bead chains here. Then I'm going to tie some some eight turns on the on the uh, on the eyes here on the bead chain. Also, I'm gonna tie underneath the bead chain and then pull tight. So my, my chain eyes are gonna stay in place. But the most important thing in order to get this to, to stay in place is of course to take a bit of saber gap, apply it to the, uh, to the tying thread here. And then make some turns using that. Uh, be careful not to pull some of the saber gap into your bobbin. That's a fast way of um, of disrupting your your bobbin. There we go. Move my tank thread up in in front of the eyes, and then we're gonna take a soft heckle. When you select one of these, it's just from the same one that we, where we picked the marabou. When you select this, you need to, to take care to get a feather that has the right uh, dimensions and, and the right length for this fly. And you want one that is actually a bit longer than what you would expect uh, for this pattern in particular, because it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be um, tied here um, um, in the middle. And, and it needs to, the, the hackle actually needs to, to reach a bit further down uh, than, than what you would ordinarily do because of the, uh, the composition of the fly here. So basically I'm going to turn my hackle here. And of course the bead chains here uh, works both as a fixating point for the, uh, for, the, for the trout, but it also adds some weight so this fly will, will, will fish a bit deeper. Good for winter fishing. And then again to get a bit more even on the, uh, on the thickness of uh, of the last part of the body from the senil here, you can you can you can tie down the uh, the actual hackle uh, along close to the uh, to the eye. I'll cut away this, and then I'm going to move my tying thread and force the hackle back into place here. There we go. So now you can see we have we have the first hackle here, and there is a small. Uh, this is slightly thicker than the rest here, so so this is gonna have a bit of a tapering. Uh, it's not gonna be much, but it's it it will have a bit of a tapering. It's really really difficult not to get this with uh, that the the part of the body that is closest to the eyes is gonna be slightly thicker than the rest. That is. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's 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 hard to not to have that happen. So tying down the senile as close to the eyes as possible. And then again applying a bit more tying thread here just to even things out a bit. There we go. And then I'm gonna turn my senile here. Again, close to the, close to, ah. Fold everything back. There we go. Apply some pressure. Then tie this down close to the eyes. Cut away the senile. And then the finishing touch is basically just to make another hackle. <laughs> I 
Uh, that's really annoying. You can see some tying thread on your side. You can't do that on mine. <laughs> is it is it visible in the video, Stephen? Yeah, not really. Uh, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> but there is a small gap here that ideally is not there. But that's again, it's it's a bit hard to to do on this actual pattern. And and again, this is a pattern not des designed by me. It's designed by Runu Vestpal. Um, and he's caught just simply a lot of sea trout on this. So so this is by public demand that I'm I'm making this video. Um, it's a cool fly. Uh, don't get me wrong. It really is a cool fly. Um, but I think perhaps if I had done this, I would have chosen maybe a few other materials. But um, but every now and, uh, and again, you see just see a cool fly that just catches a lot of fish. That is not something you would have thought of. And this is uh, this is 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 one of those uh, one of those cases. So so definitely definitely well, it's a relatively cheap fly with some some materials used for this that is um, a bit different from what I normally do. But but that just keeps you on the edge, you know, and and keeps you keeps you trying new things or. In this case, senile is, is a relatively old material, so so finding back to you know kind of the roots of, of a lot of things as well, and uh, and I think that's a good idea. That's great because well, senile has a lot of applications, and is used in a lot of patterns, and maybe is is one of those materials that has been forgotten a bit, and and it's nice to see uh, really really great fishermen like like Rune, um, again uh, using some of the materials that was probably the best selling and, and most used materials for a long time for woolly buggers montana nymphs and 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 and, and the like but now it's it's it, it gets an, a revival so i turned the hack hole then i'm gonna do a whip finish there we go gonna cut away the tying thread here God, uh, not that much um, of, of an eye here, so I'm just going to... Oh, no, it, it unwind on me. Of course that has to happen. Uh, <laughs> well, that happens sometimes. Well, basically, I have to unwind this a bit. Uh, and I'm going to use my... Um, I'm going to use my hackle plier to hold the thread back. And reattach my tying thread, fold both of these back, create a small head here, and then I'm gonna do the whip finish. You can, it's probably easier if I cut these off first. There we go. stuff like this happens all all the time to everyone or at least it does to me so I'm, I'm assuming that it happens to other people as well does it happen to you Stephen all the freaking time <laughs> <clears throat> you're not alone then <laughs> we are not alone then and that's nice to know as well there we go and then of course apply some uh, some either varnish or or a small amount of uh, sabre gap. I'm ju just gonna give it there's the tiniest amount of sabre gap here. There we go. And there you have it, the Sixton, which is I think a Nordic name, uh, a, a boy's name. Uh, and I actually have a friend who has a son that's called Sixton. I think it's a Swedish name. So there you go, the Sixton, um, a pattern designed by Rune Vestpal. So here it is, the finished fly, the Sixton by, by Rune Vestpal. As always, you can find the complete material kit for this fly and all the other flies on this YouTube channel at Nordic Anglers. That's my web shop. Um, we have a ton, just an amazing amount of, of fly tying, but we also carry Loomis and Sage and Sims and all the other uh, important uh, brands. Uh, when you're a fly fisherman um, and it would mean a lot to me if you would swing by take a look at our selection and if you happen to buy a, a thing or two then that would mean a lot otherwise i hope you would subscribe to the channel 
that again is is something that that we highly value um and uh, and otherwise i just wish you the best of luck out on the water and tie a few of these if you're going sea trout fishing or just trout fishing you'll never know if if this is going to be the one that makes or breaks the day i know that when rune says this is a fly that catches a lot of fish then that is the truth so thank you for watching good luck out on the water <laughs>